Welcome to Hacking Arcade ROMs, Lesson 5, Part 2, Foundations of Assembly Language Programming. In this lesson, we're going to learn a little bit more about the MAME debugger and how it represents the running CPU and the running program. And we're also going to actually learn assembly language programming, at least the fundamentals of assembly language program, about probably about 95% of assembly language program and most of what we're going to need to do some ROM hacking. And we're gonna, so you're gonna learn that. Um, this lesson is a little bit long. It's about 40 minutes long, and it's a little bit harder than most other episodes. It's not hard, it just requires concentration. So make sure you have about 40 minutes of free time before watching this, and that you will be able to concentrate undisturbed. You don't want anything going on in the background distracting you. It's also important to really hammer home the points that you, you're probably gonna watch the next episode um, fairly shortly after you watch this episode because the next episode, in this episode, we're gonna do, a, we're gonna do the explanation in a kind of like a, almost an academic lecture. And in the next episode, we're gonna actually, more like a lab, we're gonna actually load an assembly language program that we wrote that represents the things that I teach you. And we're gonna step through the instructions one at a time and actually see how the CPU has changed, how the registers are changed and how everything is, is working and, um, and how RAM's changed. So um, you, you wanna, that really will help hammer home the ideas and the concepts that I show you in this lesson. But let's begin. So in the last part of lesson five, we started on the road to making a free play ROM hack. And we determined that there is a value in RAM that holds the credits. And we want to be able to alter the ROM code so when the system starts, after it's done with its initialization, it will, we can put some credits in the machine. And then later on, we'll learn how to um, hack the, the ROM so that when you play a game, you don't actually lose credits. Normally when you play a game, you start a game, you lose a credit. Um, we're, we'll hack that, so then we'll have infinite credits. Or we'll, we won't have infinite credits, but we'll never lose credits. So we'll always have credits to play. However, before I can teach you how to do this, I have to talk about assembly language programming on the Z80. And basic CPU architecture and assembly um, language programming in general, and, and a little more about using the debugger. So we're gonna actually just step aside and, and learn some theory here, but we'll, we'll do some hands-on stuff too, so that'll be fun. And I'm gonna teach you the fundamentals, the basics of assembly language programming, specifically for the Z80 CPU. And if you're thinking, whoa, whoa, I'm not even a programmer. Um, uh, if you've ever heard of assembly, you know it's, most people think of it, it's scary, arcane knowledge that, you know, only wizards use. Um, and that's true and false. It's not many people use assembly and usually the ones that do are really good. But the thing is, assembly is not hard. It's really, really simple. That's the problem. It takes forever to do anything complicated in assembly because it, each assembly instruction does such a tiny bit, very simple, um, instructions and it's also very easy to screw up things. So you, normal people don't, no more, you know, programmers, computer science people don't program an assembly unless they need to. And there's a very few part of the population of, of programmers that need to actually use assembly. In the old days, when they made these video games, um, programmers wrote assembly directly. Nowadays, we have other languages like C or C++ or Java or Python. Um, that is a lot easier to use. But um, for the purpose of hacking ROMs, we're not gonna do anything complex. Um, and we have to know assembly to hack ROMs. So you are going to learn more than, uh, by the time we're done with this lesson, you will know assembly, which most programmers, people who have de you know, degrees or careers in programming, computer science, don't even know. So I, I think that's kind of cool. Um, and you're gonna find assembly is not hard. It's just, it's kind of tedious. You have to do a lot of stuff. Um, and you're gonna find out that computers actually don't ultimately do much. Most assembly instructions either 
move numbers or move data around between RAM and what's called a register, um, add or subtract data from the registers, or do logical operations like OR, XOR, and AND, or make decisions and change the flow of code. That's really the four cases that I can think of, or the basic cases that, think, that um, all computers do. And that's really at the, the, the basis of all computing. All that's happening is numbers are being moved around from one place to another, or having a math or logical operations done on them. Um, so that's pretty cool. Now, before we talk about assembly though, I wanna talk about this debugger, this main debugger a little bit. So we've used it, but I haven't shown you much about it. It's time that we talk a little bit more about the debugger. So what's happening here is this window here shows you a couple things. This left part of the pane shows you, and I'm actually gonna hit F8. If you hit F8, I'm sorry, you gotta click into the screen and then hit F8. It pauses the game um, when it hits what's called a a um, vertical blanking signal. Don't worry about what that is, but um, it, it's when your CRT actually is repositioning the, the um, electron gun. And MAME knows when it's doing this and it stop, and that's called a vertical blank. And it, it, it stops when you hit F8 in MAME, it stops in the next vertical blank. So what we have here is we have three different things. And don't worry about the vertical blanking. That just, I just want to stop the game. That was the purpose of doing that. We have three columns. We have the numbers here. These are actually addresses. Okay, because when the CPU is executing code, it's looking at some address and executing the code at that address. Okay, and then we're going to go over here on this rightmost pane. At this address, for example, 66, the content in memory is F5. And we can verify that because we've used the memory window before. And we can go to 0x66, um, and you see the data there is F5. So this is just a, um, here is the addresses, kind of like you see in the memory window, and here is what's in there. What this is is actually the raw machine code. Each of these sets of numbers is something that the CPU, that we're telling the CPU we want to do some action. And the CPU knows, for example, what F5 means to do, or what E5 means to do, or what D5 means to do, or what DDE5 means, okay? And um, this is called machine code. This is what the CPU actually uses. Now, that's fine for m machines, but it's not very useful for us. It's very hard for us to understand. So there is a kind of like a friendly, almost a more English language or human readable format called the assembly code or the assembly language instructions. And they map directly to one of these uh, or, or these machine language. For example, F5 is push AF, whatever that means. Okay, don't worry if you don't know what that is. Okay, e, E3088 is LD or load A8800. Okay, and again, you don't know what that is yet. That's fine. We're gonna learn that today. So what you see is the address. You see what the machine code is and then what the human readable form or the human readable instruction is, okay? And um, this is what the machine, when you hit F5 and the machine runs, it's executing. And you see this um, highlighted thing. I'm gonna hit F8 again. This highlighted line is actually the current instruction the CPU is about to execute, okay? And you can actually make the CPU execute one instruction at a time. You can find it here by, if you go to the debug window, it's called step into. F11, you just hit it on your keyboard, and you see when I hit it, it's gonna, some things over here change, and it's gonna go down one line of code, okay? And you can keep hitting that, and it, it executes one instruction at a time, okay? So that's all cool, great. So we have addresses, assembly language code, and what the machine language representation is over here, great. What's this stuff? Well, these are registers. These are registers, and what a register is, it's a um, very fast piece of memory that's installed or directly located on the CPU. And rather than having a address like 006C, re registers have names. 
they're kind of like variables. If you've ever done any computer program before, registers are just variables that exist on the CPU. And the interesting thing about registers are, if you wanna do any operations on the CPU, ultimately the data you wanna operate on needs to go into a register um, before it can be, the CPU can actually access it and, and do stuff on it. So what we have here is the register PC. And PC is special, we'll never directly modify PC, okay? I mean, we will, but indirectly. PC is a register and it has 16 bits of information that it holds. So it holds four hexadecimal digits, okay? And that's the program counter. PC is a program counter and it's the actual memory address that the CPU is about to read and execute instructions from. So when we hit F, we're at 6E right now, we can see that highlighted and PC six, hit, sit, says 6E. If we hit F11, we notice it goes down to 7.1 and PC increments to 7.1, okay? We will not directly modify PC. We'll do it indirectly, but not directly. SP is another, what's called a 16-bit register. It's called the stack pointer. Don't even worry about it right now, okay? Now, registers that we will directly modify are AF. AF is actually um, a combination of two registers. There's register A, which holds eight bits, just so this, these two hexadecimal digits, right now A is holding FF. And there's register F, which is holding two more bits, eight zero, okay? Um, these are called, F is what's called the low byte, and A in this case is called the high byte, because when you write it out, A, um, F, this, whatever is in A actually, if you look at the, the whole, value of AF as a, as a whole, A is the most significant, um, and F is the least significant byte, okay? Don't worry about that too much right now. But A is a register that holds eight bits, F is a register that holds eight bits, but we can also re refer to register AF, which is both of those registers put together, which holds a total of 16 bits. And the same goes for BC. B is a register that holds eight bits, or one byte, C holds eight bits or one byte, but we can refer to the entire 16 bits, that is A and B concatenated as register B, C. Same with D, E, or H, L, okay? Um, so A, I'm sorry, B, C, D, E, H, L are, are three registers. Um, they're 16 bits, if you refer to them as the, you know, the, the two character register name, but you can also refer to just half of the register as whatever its value is, like B or C or D or E or H or L, okay? Great. And we'll be putting things and moving things between um, these, okay? IX is a register at 16 bits. You can't, there is no special I and no, no separate X. Um, we're not gonna talk about that too much. IY is also a 16-bit register. And AF2, BC2, DE2, and HL2 are, um, they're kind of, they're not backup registers, but there's an instruction that lets you take whatever is in, for example, AF, and just store it, just kind of stash it, um, and then it becomes AF2, and then you can mess with AF, and then you can load AF2 back to AF. We're not gonna mess with that too much, but these are, they're not backup registers, but that's the only word I can think of them. So the things that end in two are, think of them as backup registers, okay? Don't worry about any of this stuff underneath here. Okay, so now we understand what, what we, we're actually seeing here. We're seeing some registers which hold values, and we're seeing the actual code that the CPU is executing, okay? Now it's time to talk a little bit, and we learned also about this F11 key, which lets you move execute one instruction at a time, every time you hit it, okay? Let's close down the um, main debugger. Okay, well, you don't have to close it down. Yeah, actually, let's close it down, okay? And now I want to talk a little bit about theory here, because um, I'm now gonna teach you fundamentals of assembly language programming for the Z80. Okay, so every CPU in the world has its own machine code or machine language. And every CPU has different operations or instructions that it can natively 
do things tasks that it can do most of you know you know if you have an intel cpu and you have a power pcp cpu they have different internal machine language and internal instructions although there are a bunch of common instructions um, that everything's going to support probably okay because they're 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 important okay ultimately any assembly language today we're going to focus on z80 assembly is not like other high-level languages such as C++, Java, Python, Perl, okay? As I mentioned before, the assembly language code, each individual instruction does something very simple and very small, okay? Um, and Z80 instructions generally perform one simple action. Most instructions, unless they're like the Intel instructions, which can actually do a whole bunch of stuff, but most instructions generally do one very simple action. And there's generally four categories of the base actions. You can move data between RAM and CPU registers. That's called a load. Um, or you can, well, when you generally it's called a load when you move data from RAM to a CPU register and a store when you move data from a CPU register to RAM. Um, the Z80 instruction just calls everything a load, whether you're going from C RAM to um, register or register to RAM. So you can move data from one place to another. You can do basic math, such as add, subtract, and increment, and decrement. Okay? Some CPUs support things like multiply. The Z80 has no multiply or divide. You can do add or subtract, and then there's two separate um, versions of add called increment and decrement, which just adds exactly one to, to um whatever your, the register that you're dealing with. You can do logical instructions like AND, OR, and XOR. And we're not gonna talk about, if you don't know what AND, OR, and XOR is, you, you probably wanna just Google that real quick. Um, we're not gonna really talk about logical instructions, but it gets important eventually in computer programming. For most of the things we're gonna do, it's not a big deal. The only thing I'm gonna show you is um, a shortcut that XOR allows you to do to quickly make something into zero. And then finally, um, CPUs will do either um, a branch or a decision where it can alter the path that it's the code that it's running based on some condition. Like if something is equal to zero, um, it could change the path and execute a different instruction. Okay, so there's really only four things. We have moving data between places, doing basic math, doing basic logical instructions, and then branching or making decisions. So again, all computing, all, when you write a program in C all, you know, or Java, wh what's happening is it's all eventually getting broken down to a uh, machine code. Um, but the, what's called the compiler or the interpreter, depending on what the language is, it's doing all this, making of all this assembly code that we're gonna talk about um, for you so you don't have to deal with it. Because there's assembly code, there's, since everything ha does just a small, tiny bit of, of, of work, you end up, it, it becomes very long to write because you have to do a lot of things to get anything done, okay? So assembly is, writing assembly, if you were actually gonna program an assembly, like make an application, would be ridiculous. It would be tedious, it would be error prone, it would take a long time to do anything. However, it's not hard because everything does something very, very simple. And for the purposes of um, ROM hacking, we're not writing the code. We're not making the game. We're just altering the game slightly. So the things we're gonna do are gonna be very basic things anyway. So most of the things we're gonna do when we hack ROMs are we're gonna either initialize some memory, alter some very, very simple code, or we're gonna bypass some code, or what's called hooking some code. Every time a certain a routine is called, we might wanna just do a couple things in um, first or last or whatever. Um, that's called hooking code. So I talked about registers before. Remember, registers are simply dedicated memory addresses or variables that are built into the CPU. And ultimately, everything has to go through a register if the CPU wants to act on it. In almost every um, computer CPU architecture I can think of, I don't, I don't know of any architecture that I can think of where Something's where a register is not involved. Okay. 
So if you want to process data, at least on the Z80, it's got to go into a register. Um, we have 8-bit registers, A, which is actually a very, very special register, B, C, D, E, H, and L. And of those registers, B and C can be combined into a 16-bit register called BC. D and E can be combined into a 16-bit register, register called DE. H and L can be combined into a 16 register, bit register called HL. HL is actually also special when you use HL, but we'll, we'll talk about that. There are two dedicated 16-bit registers that you might use, IX and IY, we probably won't deal with that. There's also the stack pointer and um, SP and PC, which we're, we're not gonna talk too much about. Stack pointer is actually incredibly useful if you're programming things, but for most of the things you, we're gonna do, you're not gonna need to deal you may indirectly deal with a stack pointer, but you don't even know what you're doing. Yeah, I mean, you don't even have to know. You don't even have to know what you're doing. Um, so I'm not going to really discuss it too much. Okay. And again, there's one very special 16-bit register that holds the address of the current instruction called the program counter, or PC. So the first operation we talked about is moving data between things, and that's a load instruction. And we write it LD, and then we have where we want the data to go, or in this case, register A, and where the data is coming from. So LDAB copies the contents of register B to A. And generally, you can copy any 8-bit register to any other 8-bit register, and any 16-bit register to any other 16-bit register. Okay. So that's um, LD, and then with two registers, you're copying one register to the other. And again, the, uh, in the way, at least, um, we, we see it in the main um, debugger, the, the thing on the right, this here, LD, is called the opcode. You always have an opcode for everything you do. Um, sometimes you'll have operands that are things that the opcode works on. Um, when you have two operands, the left operand is always the destination, and the right operand is always um, some data that we're going to do something to the destination. Eventually, when the operand, the oper when the operand does its work, the data will be stored in the left side. Okay, so we can move, we can copy one the contents of one register to another. You can also move any what's called an immediate value, any specific value that we want to hard code into the code. We can move, um, and the way we do that is we do LD and then the register, and this can be an eight bit register or a sixteen bit register. Um, and then we put the dollar sign and then the value in hex that we want to load. Okay, So what this is doing is loading the value hex 10, 10 which is 16 in decimal, into C. Okay. If you're loading an 8-bit register, you can only put 8 bits of, or 1 byte of information. If you're loading a 16-bit register, you would have to put um, 16 bits of information or two bytes. You can also move the contents of a certain memory address to register A and register A only. You can't move arbitrary memory addresses values into any other register but A, at least that I can think of. The way you do it is you do LD A for, because this is the destination, and then in brackets, I'm sorry, parentheses, and the dollar sign, the actual ret the memory address we would like to load. So this here, whatever's in, in memory address 0x1000, zero 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 zero, whatever, if that holds the value 4, for example, that will be loaded into A. Okay. There's also, we'll see, um, HL we could put in there rather than uh, what's called an immediate value. And HL, whatever the, is stored in the value HL, that memory address would be loaded into A but um, this is the immediate form, okay? So we can load things. And remember, you can only load, in, t in Z80 at least, you can only load things from a memory location that you specifically hard code by loading into A. You can't load, you couldn't do a LD um, B, for example, parentheses 1000, it, it doesn't work. It's, it's an invalid operation. Now, we can also move data from, um, registers into memory. 
um, but it's a little more restrictive than the, the, the opposite way. And, and some, uh, some CPUs call this a store, but Z80 calls it a load regardless. So in this form, LD, here's a destination, brackets 1000. Um, this means whatever we want to load, whatever stored in A into memory location 1000, because it's in parentheses, okay? You can only hard code a memory location if you're loading from A into there. So if we wanted to load some number into 1000, we have to load it into A first and then do 1000, okay? And then, then do this, okay? Um, there's also a, a special notation. Um, generally, any register can be loaded into the memory location that HL, the register HL holds. So if HL held 1000, this would say load the, the contents of register B into um, 0x1000 zero 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 or hex 1000, okay? Into whatever that, into that memory location. So it's ever stored in the contents of the register eight, HL, that it will be looked up, that memory address, and B will be stored in that memory address, okay? There are other ways to move data back and forth. However, um, these simple methods are the ones you should get started understanding. And don't worry, we'll have some examples after I give you the, the, the quick brief lecture. Now, because you might often want to copy data from memory to memory, from one location to memory to another, and then do it in large chunks, there's a special instruction on Z80 called elder. And elder is special because it does a whole bunch of things at once, okay? So elder basically is either used to copy a block of memory from one place to another or initialize a block of memory with a certain value, okay? What happens with elder is you have to actually do some instructions before you do the elder call. And what you wanna do is you want to, again, you, we wanna copy data from one bit place to another. So the memory address that we would like to be the source that we wanna copy data from, we load into HL. Then the destination where we want to copy data to is loaded into DE. And then BC is we load the amount of data we would like to copy, okay? And what happens is, and then we do this elder instruction. What happens is when elder runs, it copies whatever is in memory address or whatever is in the memory location that HL holds. So if HL is 1,000, it goes to address 1,000 and it copies it to the memory address that DE holds. So if DE was 2000, it would copy the value in memory address 1000 to memory address 2000. Then it adds one to HL and DE. So if HL was 1000, now it's 1001. If DE was 2000, now it's 2001, okay? Then it decrements BC and it keeps doing this. It will repeat until DC equals zero. So at first it's gonna copy 1000 to address 2000 then 1001 to address 2001, 1002 to address 2002, so forth and so on until DC equals zero. So again, you load HL with the starting address that you wanna start copying data from, DE with the ending address that you wanna copy data to, BC with the, the amount of data you wanna copy, the number of bytes you wanna copy starting at HL to, to go into DE, okay? And then you do the elder command. Okay, so this is one way you can copy things directly from one place to another. And here's an example. Um, if I did LDHL 1000, hex 1000, D LDDE hex 2000, LDBC hex 100, and LDER, um, by the time LDER is done, all the data from address 1000 to 1F, oops, that should be 10FF, um, is copied to 2000 to 20FF. I, I missed the zero there and I apologize for that. Now, elder is also used to quickly initialize memory or set all memory to a certain address or a certain range. And you're gonna see this notation used or this format used a lot in a lot of video games that are Z80 based, um, especially when you want to start up and initialize memory or test memory. Um, what you do here is rather than making HL and DE be far apart from each other, you would make HL be one address. Then you make DE be exactly one 
value, one location higher than HL. Then you make BC the number of bytes you want to copy. And then you load into HL whatever value you want, um, or I'm sorry, you load into the memory address that HL stores, whatever value you want to cop, what you want to initialize everything to. So if I want to initialize everything to zero, I would do LD HL zero, or in this case, because HL is already L, is a low byte, is already zero, I can just do LD HL L. So zero would be copied into address 1000. And then when elder runs, it's gonna copy 1000 to 1001. So 1000 had zero, now 1001 will have zero. Does its incrementing, then it will go to 1001 and copy that to 1002. And since we just wrote zero into 1001, then it will go to 1002. And then on the next iteration, 1002 will have zero, HL will be 1002, DE will be 1003, and again, zero will be copied into 1003. So it will do this FF times in this case. So we will write, um, effectively, by the time we're done, we'll have filled up from zero, from hex zero, I'm sorry, one zero, zero zero, to hex one zero FF. And all of them will be whatever was, um, we assigned. In this case, it was zero. Because again, um, HL was loaded 1000. The low byte is L. So we load zero into HL. But I could have just loaded anything into HL. Um, right? It would take a couple more steps, but I could have done so. Okay? So you're going to see this actually, this kind of thing a lot, when especially in startup code. Now, what other operations do we have besides loading? Well, we have math, right? Simple math, adding and subtracting. Now, on the Z80 CPU, it's special because um, you can only add things to A, register A, right? You can't arbitrarily add register B and C, for example. Every thing that you add has to be some register and register A. So, um, the result is always stored in register A. It's called the accumulator register because it's, it accumulates values. So um, for example, add AB would add the value of B plus A and then store it back at A. So this effectively add AB is equal to whatever's in A is equal to whatever's in A plus whatever's in B, okay? So you can add a register to A. You can add what's called the immediate value to A. For example, here, add A and then hex seven would be whatever's in A will now be incremented by seven. We'll add seven to whatever's in A. So if A was one, we add seven, then A is eight. Um, and the final value, the final way you can use this is you can add whatever is stored in memory location where um, that HL, whatever the register HL, that holds a memory address, whatever stores that address goes into A. So if, let's say HL was 1,000, and a memory address 1,000 hold, hold the number five, when this runs, five will be added to A, okay? And don't worry, again, we're gonna, we're gonna see these in action. So um, just try to bear with me and understand what I'm talking about. So you can add things to A. You can also subtract things from A. And the, the format is exactly the same. Everything with A, um, with adding, works exactly the same with subtracting. It's always, we're subtracting and storing the data to register A. We're subtracting from register A and storing the data back or the value back into A. You can subtract a, um, a register, an immediate value, that is just a number that you put in, or the contents of um, whatever memory address is stored in HL. Okay, so that's just the same. There are two special um, things you can do called increment and decrement. You can do this on any register, and it's special because you could think, well, all I could, this is the same as adding. Increment A is adding one, decrement, I'm sorry, yeah. Incrementing a register adds exactly one to whatever is the content of the register. Decrementing it subtracts exactly one. However, rather than just doing it on A, um, you can increment and decrement any register. And this is actually, it's got its own special um, instruction because it's so commonly used. You actually often just add exactly one or subtract exactly one from a register, computer programming. 
As I mentioned earlier, the Z80 does not have any multiplier divide, but that's okay. Because if you remember back to elementary school, a multiply is nothing more than a bunch of adds. So four times five is, could be also written as four times, or I'm sorry, four plus four plus four plus four plus four. So you do adding four five times. So you could implement four times five simply by loading A with a value four, then adding the value to four to A, adding it again, adding again, adding again. So you don't actually need a separate multiplier divide on um, any computer, because you can always implement it via a bunch of addings. Although most modern computers have a, a multiply built in directly. But um, it's not necessary, because really all, adding it, all multiplying is is a bunch of adds. Um, there's logical operations, and don't worry if you don't know what logical operations are. Um, just know that it works the same as, if you do know what they are, we're not gonna deal much with logical operations. It works the same as effectively um, adding. You can only do logical operations on A. The result is always stored in A. A is always one of the operands. Um, and you can use a register, an immediate value, or the contents of memory where HL is the memory address you're, you, you, you're looking at. Now, let's put that all together and figure out how to make a simple program. Let's say we wanted to, um, we have the addresses 0, 1, and 2. That is memory addresses. Some values are stored in those memory addresses. And we wanted to add them all together and store them into memory location 8,000. How would we do that? Well, remember, you can only directly move data from a memory, a, a hard-coded memory address into register A. So we have to do this in parts, and this is why assembly is, gets long and tedious. So what we need to do is first, we want, address, we want to add addresses, one, whatever's in address 0, 1, and 2. We have to do LDA in, bracket, in parentheses address 0. So whatever's in address 0 will be loaded into A. Then we need to actually load A into B because we're going to need to load something into A again. So we load it into A because that's what we have to do in Z80. Then we move A to B. So now B holds whatever was in address zero. Then we load the next memory address. One goes into A again. Then we add, so A is holding whatever memory address one is. B is holding whatever memory address zero was. We add A and B together, and that stores the result in A. Again, we need to now take that, so the values of whatever was in one and two are stored in A. Now we're gonna take that and load that into B. Then we load value 2, or the memory address 2, into A again. And then we, we add B, which holds the values of memory address 0 and 1 added together. Add that with A, which is currently holding the memory address, whatever was stored in memory address 2. And now they're all added together and stored in A. And then we load that back. Um, we take the value of A, which is the sum of whatever was in address 0, 1, and 2, and then store that to um, memory address 8000. Okay? Remember, anytime you're reading from a memory address, it's enclosed in brackets. And you can have a um, what's called an immediate value here where you, um, uh, you, you type the address, that you hard code the address, or that could be a register in brackets. And uh, depending on the instruction, not all instructions will let you, again, move um, an immediate value to um, a register. But that's a simple program. So good. Now you have the fundamental knowledge of assembly language programming. That's all it really comes down to is this. Okay, there's actually jumps and branches too, but we'll worry about that later. Okay? So um, you may want to, if you didn't understand this, watch this, this episode again, because in the next part of Lesson 5, we're actually going to run a small program that I've written that shows you all these loads, these ads, and, 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 um, and things. And um, we'll see how, we'll, we'll step through each instruction in the de debugger and see how the registers in the memory are being altered. And that will help, that will really um, kind of bring it home for you if, you, if, it, if it doesn't make sense. Because pro it probably doesn't make a lot of sense right now. Um, I actually wanted to show you this all at once, but that the, the length of the video would be like an hour, and most people won't make it through, I don't think.
because it's just too long. So I'm, I'm breaking this up into more parts than I was initially hoped for, but um, we got to do it. So if you didn't understand this episode, look at it again and then try um, the next episode or the next part of lesson five when it comes out, which will be hopefully soon. Okay, so hopefully you understand the fundamentals of assembly language programming right now. Um, it's okay if you don't fully understand it. The next lesson is gonna actually, we're gonna step through um, these instructions that I've shown you and actually see how it works and, and the CPU and how things are changing. And that will really hopefully uh, hit a light bulb and, and make things a little more understandable. Um, however, if you're really confused, go back and watch the episode again. Um, but if you don't get it, don't give up. The next episode, I think, is really going to help you out. Um, now that you have the fundamentals, it, it, things should click once you, once you actually start seeing um, these instructions and what changes in the CPU. All right. See you next time.